as little as humanly possible in the intro but talk to me about leo leo is this really suave funny nothing touches him character just give us very quickly for the benefit of our readers uh, a quick uh, overview uh, i think i think what makes leo interesting is he's he's so different to most of us is that he has no um, material desires um, he's an observer of life and society and um, he if I meet very interesting people along the way and um, comes up with some very interesting observations of their lives. He tends not to judge people. I, I think he sees their different occupations, whether they are a soccer player or a drug addict or a, um, a, a stripper in, in, in different ways to what I think that we see those people. But you've created a character. I don't know where you found Leo. I don't know if there is a... a a Leo or in, in our circle of, of, of friends. I don't know if there is a Jerome or parts of it. Please tell me that this Leo doesn't exist in real life. <laughs> I, I think he did exist. I think maybe uh, our modern life, um, uh, the Leos have disappeared, but he definitely did exist at a time. And uh, I've wanted to bring him back. He probably existed in the 70s and 80s perhaps in North America, but um, <coughs> I find it very interesting to have him living in Cape Town and swimming in Musenberg and experiencing our life and, and understanding how he reacts to, uh, to, to that life. Uh, Leo has got this view, and you've talked about it a little bit, he's got this outlook on life that, and the way you describe it in this book, everything from um, the reason why he's accepted at the gym without um, shoes and that he doesn't have an access card to when Jerome gets two tickets for them to go to the gardens to watch this band perform. The little observations that Leo has, like you go and you go, oh, well, I, actually, I've seen those two people that can't stop touching each other in public. I've seen those little things, the girl in the gym that kicks the bag uh, uh, ever so hard it's got maybe looks like she's got a personal issue Leo, Leo really is on the money on most things yes um, I always say think about writing is you often looking at a photograph of real life and then you changing it so I those places him going to Kirsten Bosch and <clears throat> being at the gym uh, different uh, swimming in the, uh, in, on the beach at Musenberg or going to a restaurant uh, are all events that we've all been through but it takes somebody different to observe it in, in, a, in a different way and um, you know it, there are many aspects of Leo's character that may not be that savory but at the end of the day he's always kind he's a kind yeah. man and um, that's what I've really enjoyed uh, about writing him I love that you say enjoy because when you pick up this book from start to finish, it's hilariously funny. It is, I mean, as funny as Jerome looking for trouble in Kirschenbach's gardens and then the, the, the boyfriend gets up and Leo describes him as running away and losing his slops. Um, it really is a very, very funny book. Describe this idea of a comic novella of sexual proportions. I've never heard that description before. Well, that, that byline was actually invented by my publisher, Tim Richmond. We, I always uh, disagree a little bit with him as that there's a lot of the use of the word sex on the back, and there is, there is, <laughs> there is sex a lot in of the use. book, but I, <laughs> I wrote it as a love story. It, it really is Leo's love story. You know, he, he's met this girl when he was 18 years old, and he kissed her in a forest. Yeah, uh, Jenny's sister. Fire, and he's, he's, never he, he's, yeah, he's never forgotten that, and... Um, Everything really that he does in life goes back, well, he believes it goes back to that, that moment. So um, the sexual novella is that it is a, sh it's a shorter book. It, uh, we always wanted it to be something that you could read on the airplane between Cape Town and, and Johannesburg. Uh, there, there is obviously his, he is a sexual person. Yeah. He has uh, some incredible relationships with women, which he tends to find himself in more than actually create those opportunities. He... He tends to deal with life as it presents itself every day to him. Peter, before this, you, you wrote thrillers. The two books before this were, were quite dark. Here you go and you, you write a dark comedy of sorts. 
how funny are you in real life? Because this book is hilarious. I don't think I'm very funny. I, 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 I don't think I try to be funny. I, my wife said to me, we were talking about this interview, and she said, you know what, you're a jester. So I would say I'm more a jester than, than being funny. But um, I, I don't try to make Leo funny, and I think that's why he is funny. He, he's not really trying. He's just, his observations are just so different to, to what, we, what we are used to. It is very different writing a comedy uh, compared to plot-driven crime thrillers. It's actually, for me, a lot easier um, and a lot more enjoyable. But uh, it, it is always a risk, you know, if you develop a, uh, a readership of people who enjoy reading crime thrillers and now suddenly their next book, they pick up Blue Cow's Guy and they're looking for the plot and the police and the thriller, they, um, they're quite surprised. So I think that's always a risk you take as a, as a writer if you change genres um, in the middle. I don't want to give away too much, but does the cow thing have anything to do with when Leo and their father went for a drive and they hit a cow? Yes, it's a, the title is really around the blue sky being his optimis, optimism. And uh, he's always optimistic, Leo. He always believes the next day is going to turn up something better. Uh, and when he does get that, uh, the good luck going, there's always a big cow that walks into the sky, that he, uh, into the road that he bangs into. So it's really a, um, a comparison of his optimism with what really life bangs you with as you go along. I've got to ask you about Jerome. Where in the world did you find a Jerome? Where in the world does Jerome come from? Well, I always like the idea of, you know, I'm, a, I'm a huge South African patriot and I, we, I get very nervous with some of the stories that come out of what our prisons and our gangsters. And I, I try to really look at a view that some of these, some of these things are not as bad as as they made out to be. And Jerome is an interesting chap, is that he wants to be a gangster, but his, uh, his natural affiliation is he's is, is a, is a family boy. Um, he, with, with, he's got a, a loving mother, and uh, I, I think Leo sees that in him. And uh, they have this unusual relationship between a sort of elderly or older white man and a, and a young colored gangster that actually makes a very interesting dynamic. Yeah, it does. Peter Church, thank you very much for joining us from our Seapoint Studios. The book is called Blue Cow Sky, and it is hilariously funny. I promise you, you're going to not stop laughing. It's really, really very funny. Uh, Peter Church, is its third offering. It's available in all good bookstores. Go and get it. It's called Blue Cow Sky. We take an ad break. Don't go anywhere.